Greetings. Today I will talk about the Tippecanoe Battlefield Memorial Park, located near Prophetstown State Park near Lafayette, Indiana. The Tippecanoe Battlefield Memorial marks the site of an important battle prior to the War of 1812 that pitted troops led by Indiana Territorial Governor William Henry Harrison and warriors led by the Shawnee brother of Tecumseh, the Prophet. The battle took place near the town established on the Wabash River at the mouth of the Tippecanoe River. Sometime in the spring of 1808, the brothers moved their village in Ohio to the banks of the Wabash River at the mouth of the Tippecanoe River. The town acquired the name Prophetstown and eventually had between three and 6,000 residents and over 200 houses. All the trees around the town were removed so any invading army would not have any place to conceal themselves. Tecumseh had begun establishing a great confederacy of tribes to oppose white encroachment in the native lands. He embarked on a journey in 1809 to unite the tribes and had had some success. Early in 1811, he once again left Prophetstown, traveling south to meet with the Cherokee and other southern tribes. He left his brother, the Prophet, in charge of the town, admonishing him not to fight Harrison as Tecumseh's plan had not yet come into fruition. In late October 1811, William Henry Harrison, knowing Tecumseh was absent and wanting to take advantage of it, had assembled an army and begun to march north along the Wabash River to oppose natives gathered there. He arrived at near the town in the late afternoon, November the 6th, 1811. After a brief meeting with some chiefs representing the Prophet, Harrison moved his troops to a site about two miles north of Prophetstown. He ordered his men to sleep wearing their weapons and battle gear. Spurred on by the Prophet, native warriors attacked Harrison's armies in the last hours before dawn on November the 7th. The plan of attack for the Amerindian forces of between five and 600 warriors to surround Harrison's force with a with a crescent-shaped formation, with each end of the crescent anchored at the creek. Uh, as a side note, uh, Harrison's force had somewhere in the neighborhood of 1,100 soldiers. Uh, anyway, the Kickapoos would take the right position on the horn of the crescent and the Winnebago's the left. The center of the crescent was occupied by Potawatomi warriors and a scattering of other tribes. The plan called for a band of Kickapoos to enter the camp, find Harrison, and kill him. This band had been told to look for a man riding a white horse, which was Harrison's standard mount. They would use whistles made from bone fragments and rattles made from dried beer hooves to communicate across the extended battlefield. A cold, hard rain driven by a sharp wind chilled the warriors as they took their position. The flickering campsite campfires in the camp allowed the warriors some limited visibility of the camp's interior. The prophet had assured his warriors that his magic would ward off the bullets fired by the American soldiers. His assurances were false, as many warriors fell when the soldiers returned their opening volleys. As the warriors began their attack, Harrison ordered the campfires extinguished. He had not mounted his customary. The battle raged for about an hour, with warriors swarming around the entire camp. The American line held, however, and inflicted heavy casualties on the attackers. As dawn approached, the discouraged warriors began their retreat, and by the time daylight was full, the battle was over. Sixty-eight soldiers had died in the attack, and another 126 were wounded. The soldiers found 36 dead warriors, however, many of the dead were carried from the battleground by their companions. The number of warriors killed or wounded during the battle will never be known. Um, the uh, Tippecanoe Battlefield is operated by the Tippecanoe County Historical Association in the 16-acre 16 16-acre 16 Tippecanoe Battlefield Park. The park interprets the history of events of the Battle of Tippecanoe. The park also includes a nature center as well as artifacts of European and Native American cultures. Uh, you'll find the Tippecanoe Battlefield at 1001 South Street, Lafayette, Indiana, 47901. Uh, the website is www.tcha.mus.in.us slash battlefield.html. Uh, Prophetstown State Park is uh, very near the uh, this uh, battlefield, and the 
With the Wabash River forming its southern flank, Provincetown State Park features 900 acres of restored prairie, hiking, camping, and aquatic center, the museum at Provincetown nearby, and the farm of, at Provincetown, a 1920s living history museum. You can find Provincetown State Park at 4112 East State Road 225, West Lafayette, Indiana, and the phone is 765 566 Seven four nine one nine. The mailing ad- the mapping address is five five four five Swisher Road, West Lafayette, Indiana four seven nine zero six. The website www.in.gov slash dnr park lake slash two nine seven one dot htm. This selection is from my book. Indiana Timeless Tales, 1805 through 1811. The book includes an account of the battle as well as the events preceding and after the battle. There are also many other events in there from early Indiana history during that period. Uh, it's the sixth book in my, my Indiana Timeless Tales series, which begins with prehistory Indiana up to and including the battle. The next book in the series, The Algonquin Tribes of Indiana, is available on the website as well. If you like the stories I am relating, please follow me on YouTube where a video version of this podcast will be available. The book, as well as the rest of my 130 plus titles, can be found on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, Apple, and other online book sale- sellers in ebook, audiobook, and softbound formats. My website, www.mossypeatbooks.com, has links to all of these vendors as well as a way to purchase the books direct from me. Residents of Southeast Indiana can purchase most of my books at the Walnut Street Variety Shop on George Street in downtown Batesville. I hope you enjoyed this podcast.